So I came across this video from Trevor Noah basically engaging in a soliloquy of sorts um, about his thoughts on the gun conversation and the gun debate in America. So I figured I'd give my own responses to the points he makes in the video because I think they need to be said. So let's dive right in. Everything else America believes is possible. We're like, yeah, oh, we're gonna go to the moon, we're gonna go to Mars. Oh, we're gonna cure cancer. We go, oh, it doesn't mean we can't do it. We can do it, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. We're gonna... Then when it comes to guns, all of a sudden, so many people are like, it's impossible to stop it. You just, you can't, there's so many. Oh, what are you gonna do? No, it's not that Americans think it's impossible to stop. It's that we don't believe making people helpless and then able to defend themselves is the way to do it. You're rich, you can hire private security to follow you around for 24 hours, seven days a week. Most Americans don't have that privilege. So we own handguns, shotguns, and AR-15s to protect our families from criminals and our country from tyrannical governments. You may not like that, yet here you are in America making millions by giving us backhanded compliments and then trying to shame us because we won't bow down to daddy government and say, please take our guns away from us and protect us. The irony. People try and make it a game of whack-a-mole when it comes to solving problems. You know, you propose any type of solution and they go, well, that wouldn't have solved this one. This wouldn't have stopped that. And you're like, yeah, but that's, that's not how solutions work. Right? There is no problem that is going to be solved by one solution. A lot of the time, big problems require a multitude of solutions. And what you do is you try and fix it incrementally, step by step. Trevor, your only solution is to further restrict the constitutional right. We aren't playing whack-a-mole, we're playing Dungeons and Dragons, trying to defend the castle that is our two-way rights that you and your mainstream media cohorts keep trying to siege upon at every opportunity. You're not incrementally trying to solve a problem, you're incrementally trying to ban guns. More people are killed with handguns and rifles. If you're willing to ban rifles, why wouldn't the next incremental step be to ban handguns? We're not stupid. And look at cars, for instance. Cars is a simple idea. Right? When they started off, it was like a bucket with wooden wheels. You just crashed and you died. <laughs> that was it. And then over time, people said, well, why don't we improve it? Why don't we say it has to have brakes? Wait, we never thought of brakes. <laughs> let's add that. Let's add brakes and let's add this and let's add seat belts. We've gotten to the point where cars drive themselves now. And still we say, we've got to write laws. We still say, let's make sure that a self-driving car adheres to certain standards. Let's make sure that it hasn't stopped. And yet somehow with guns, it just stopped. You know, it's such, it's such a strange argument for me. Oh, but that wouldn't have fixed it. Yeah, but if you see a loophole, why not fix it before it leads to a problem that it could have stopped? The problem with the car analogy is that when a drunk driver kills someone with their car, we don't try to ban cars. When people kill people because they were street racing, we don't try to ban sports cars. When a self-driving car kills someone, we don't try to ban self-driving cars. However, because some mass shooters have used AR-15s, you wanna ban AR-15s. Guns have improved in safety the same way cars have. They're more reliable and they have better safety features. Everything we did to make driving safe focused on improving the safety of the item and education. Everything you wanna to do to make gun ownership safer focuses on restricting guns. I always say the same thing. Oh, it's a slippery slope. Which guns do you ban? You know, like which guns do you wanna ban? It's like, well, just start with the ones that people seem to be using over and over again to go into schools to kill a bunch of children at one time. Oh, but that won't, what if they come with it? Yeah, then we'll deal with that, you know? It's a lot harder to commit these mass shootings when you don't have certain types of weapons. I told you, they wanna ban guns incrementally. It doesn't take a genius to see that his argument makes no logical sense. It's a known fact that handguns are the most common weapon type used in mass shootings in the United States, with a total of 146 different handguns being used in 98 incidents between 1982 and June 2022. These figures are calculated from a total of 129 reported cases over this period, meaning handguns are involved in about 76% of mass shootings. Yet Trevor says we should ban the guns used most in these types of shootings. Those are handguns, but you're talking about banning AR-15s and then telling us we'll deal with the rest later. That means you're arguing from pure ignorance and that you don't know the data, or you're arguing from pure emotion because AR-15s scare you, or you're doing exactly what I know you're doing. You're being deceptive in that you know it's easier to go after AR-15s now, only to come after handguns and next. The most deadly school shooting in US history was Virginia Tech. The shooter killed 33 people with handguns. 
You want to tell me again about how having certain guns that make it easier to kill a bunch of people need to be banned? People are like, oh, it wouldn't fix it. Yeah, nothing fixes everything. But you got to start. You got to start somewhere. They almost use like the gym, the gym argument. That's what it is. You know, when you're trying to get in shape. <laughs> it's because why don't you go out? Nah, I'm just not gonna change anything. <laughs> nah, push-ups don't help. Yeah, push-ups on their own don't help. And you know, walking on its own, do, its own doesn't help. Drinking more water on its own doesn't help. You combine these things step by step, day by day, and then you wake up one day and you're like, well, wow, I look a little bit better than I did before. I feel a little bit better than I did before. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's incremental. But it's really interesting that it's the one area where so many people just want to throw their hands up. Trevor, you talk as if we don't have any gun laws in this country. We have over 300 federal gun laws and thousands of gun laws on a state and local level. What do you mean we need to start somewhere? The first piece of national gun control legislation was passed on June 26, 1934 with the National Firearm Act. We started over 80 years ago. You know what's ironic about Trevor's gym analogy though? The one thing he didn't mention was diet. Anyone who knows anything about losing weight knows you can't outwork a bad diet. Yes, more gun control, i.e. lifting weights, makes you feel safer, but if you don't deal with the root cause, i.e. your bad diet, nothing is going to change. As a matter of fact, it'll probably get worse. The same people, by the way, where when they first were told that this was an undocumented immigrant, they were quick. Yeah, they were, all of a sudden they were like, oh, we, we gotta do, we gotta shut down the borders. We got, this is why we need stricter, go, go. and then they were like, what? Oh no, it was, it's not what we, look, this is not the time to politicize things. Or... <laughs> we don't know what could have been done and we, there's nothing that could have been done and we gotta realize that bad people are gonna do bad things. Oh, but when you thought it was somebody who came across the border illegally, then you, you said there was something you could do. Oh well, yeah, well, that, that, yeah, yeah. He's not lying. There were indeed pro-gun people who did this, but let's not act like the AR-15s are to you what certain immigrants are to the people you were just describing. Y'all both do the same shit. Once you hear about a mass shooting, you start screaming about assault weapon bans until you find out they use the handgun and then, oh, you get real quiet or you just ignore it all together. But here's the big difference. Foreigners don't have a constitutional right to enter the U.S., but citizens of the U.S. have a constitutional right to keep and bear arms. So you're the only one making an argument to infringe on a constitutional right, which requires an exceedingly higher standard than, let's just try it and see if it works. And the saddest thing is it's a small group of people. Most Americans are on the same page. It's like a small group of people who've managed to shift the Overton window on the conversation around guns. Most gun owners are logical about this. Like, gun, like real gun owners go to the range and they shoot, you should see how they respect weapons, you know? They'll even be the ones who go like, yeah, maybe we get rid of some of these guns and maybe we change some of those laws and whatever. But then there's this small little group, this lobby that manages to shift the entire conversation in the country. Like, you can't do it. Trevor, stop patronizing gun owners and people in the middle. If the majority of gun owners agreed with you, you wouldn't be making this video. You only say this as a shaming tactic to the people who aren't gun owners but are in the middle on this issue. They are the ones who really have the power in this conversation. You're trying to get them to feel like, well, if the majority of gun owners agree with Trevor, then maybe I should too. If anything, this shows that you have very little respect for the people in the middle and their ability to think for themselves. I think it's safe to say I know way more real gun owners than you, and none of them agree with banning AR-15s or any of your proposed gun control measures. So stop lying. Someone said to me uh, recently about this conversation. He's like, why do we bother? It's like, why do we keep having this conversation? I was like, hey man, I don't know. Why did Martin Luther King Jr. bother? You know, why did Nelson Mandela bother? Why did Mahatma Gandhi bother? Why did Harriet Tubman bother? Why, you know, it's like, the, you have to keep bothering. That's what hope is. You just wake up and you try again and you try again and you try again and you try again and then you know, one day you succeed or you die of old age. Trevor, Martin Luther King fought for civil rights. Nelson Mandela fought for civil rights. Gandhi fought for civil rights. Harriet Tubman used a gun to fight for civil rights. You, my friend, are doing the opposite because the Second Amendment is a civil right. And you just spent the last four minutes fighting to restrict it. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment in this country, except for when it comes to the Second Amendment. However, I can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family. So help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment, when it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. 
Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, click the I'm the Militia link in the description section of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.